everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the very simple yet effective bar stitch. If you love all things crochet and are passionate about the craft, then you have definitely come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on all my future crochet videos. Now originally I started working this up with the intention of it being a scarf, but as I've gone along, it sort of occurred to me, this might actually make for a really lovely baby blanket instead. So before I go ahead and frog all this hard work that I've already done, now is the perfect time to show you how you do the bar stitch so we can both get on and make a blanket without having to wait. <laughs> now the bar stitch would work beautifully with just one color yarn and let the texture speak for itself. Or you can of course do multiple colors like I have done here. All the information for the yarns that I use is in the description box below. So don't forget to expand that show more section where you'll find all the information and loads of links and everything you could possibly need down in that description box. Okay, let's jump in to how we do the bar stitch. So I'm going to work my sample using two colors so you can see exactly how to achieve this effect. Now the pattern multiple for the bar stitch sounds a little odd, but it's three plus three. <laughs> so it's not just a flat three, to get the actual pattern to align correctly, you have to chain a multiple of three, 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 three until you have the desired width, then add three more chains. This doesn't always work on a flat multiple of three. So you have to do that three plus three. Hopefully that has not confused you. <laughs> so for this tiny little sample, I'm going to go ahead and chain 15, which is my multiple of three plus three. I can see the comments already. <laughs> Why is it not just three? Trust me, it's not just three. So that's my 15 chains. So for the very first row, we're going to be working into the second chain from the hook. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. Count back one, two, and into that second chain, place a single crochet. Then we're going to place a single crochet in all the remaining chains down the row. So I chained 15, so I will have 14 single crochet at the end of this row. So I've got my 14 single crochet in row one. Now for row two, chain one, which does not count as a stitch. Turn your work and work into that very first stitch. We're going to place a single crochet. And then single crochet in all your remaining stitches down the row. So you want to have 14 single crochet again. Now row three, chain one and turn. So row three is the trickiest row of this entire pattern. Once we get past row three, I promise you it is plain sailing from this point on. This is the only really tricky row where you could potentially go slightly awry. So ignoring that chain one you just did, we're going to start with a single crochet in the first two stitches. That's one, that's two. Now look back at this very first row you did here and you need to be able to identify your single crochet stitches. So you can find them by these two loops here working into the chain. If I'm quite dramatic and pull it around, hopefully here you can see there's my chain and that is the single crochet that was worked into it. So you've got two loops for the single crochet. Here's another one, here's another one. You need to be able to identify these little chaps along the bottom. So ignore the first two, so skip that one, skip that one. Keep your eye on this third one here. And we're going to be working 
a front post double crochet around that third stitch of this row one. So front post double crochet, yarn over, go around the stitch. It's quite hard on a single crochet, but just sort of shove your hook in there. Yarn over, pull up, you'll have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you've worked around the post of that stitch. I've been quite dramatic and I've shoved it around a bit, but hopefully you get the idea. You just wanna shove your hook in to catch one of those stitches. Now ignore this unworked stitch here where that double crochet would have gone. Ignore that. So skip that one entirely and place a double crochet in the next two. So you can see that skip stitch, hopefully, behind there. There it is. <laughs> I lost it. It's hard to tell with this variegated yarn. So you've got two single crochet. And again, we're going to be doing a front post double crochet around this single crochet here. So find the one you just crocheted around. That's here. And count one, two, and around this third one here, front post double crochet. Skip that stitch, single crochet in the next two. So we're going to repeat this all the way down. As I said, this is the trickiest, most irritating row of the entire thing. Single crochet for two, and then skip the two single crochets below them and do a front post double crochet around that third one, two rows back. Then skip that unworked stitch, leave it unworked, single crochet in the next two. When you reach the end of the row, you will have your stitch that you're going to skip and leave unworked and you'll have two single crochets left. So we're going to place a single crochet in those last two, but as I'm going to be changing colour, I'm going to change colour on this very last single crochet. So pop a single crochet in there and a single crochet in this very last stitch. Now to change colour, get your stitch to the very last point at which you would do a yarn over to finish off. And instead of yarning over with the old colour, you bring in the new, and you yarn over with that one. All right, we have survived the worst row. <laughs> it absolutely is the worst row. Now that one is out of the way, you should have two single crochet to start, two single crochet in between your post stitches and end on two single crochet. Now we're going to begin row four which is the start of the pattern repeat rows. Okay, row four, start of the pattern repeat. It is a two row pattern repeat. We've got those three god awful tricky rows out of the way. <laughs> and now it is plain sailing. So chain one, which does not count as a stitch. Rotate your work and place a single crochet into that very first stitch of the row. Now single crochet in the top of all the stitches all the way along. So including your post stitches, all of these work all the way along. Just a single crochet in each.
So that is my 14th single crochet. So I started with a chain 15, which is why I want to have 14 stitches for every row. So that was row four. For row five, chain one, turn. Now ignore that chain one, does not count as a stitch, and work a single crochet in the first two single crochet of the row. That's one, that's two. And now we're going to be doing front post stitches again. Now, you did all the hard work in row three, anchoring that very first front post double crochet down into these single crochet rows. For this row, we're going to do a front post double crochet around your front post stitch below. So you don't have to hunt for a stitch anymore. It is sticking right up. You can't miss it. Let's pop your hook behind it. So it's just gone behind it. I haven't come out of the back of the work. It's just behind this stitch and work your double crochet stitch. Easy, right? So much easier <laughs> than trying to put them in here. Now, just like before, skip a stitch, leave it unworked. And keep doing this all the way along. So you've got two single crochet, front post double crochet around that existing front post stitch. Leave the stitch behind it unworked, work a single crochet in the next two. Do that all the way along. When you have done your very last post stitch, end with a single crochet in the last two stitches. And if you wanted to change color again, now is the time on this final single crochet. So I haven't cut my end. I'm just going to float it up the side because I'm being lazy <laughs> and just pull it through. Technically that is a technique, floating the yarn. And then you're ready to begin rows four and five again. So for the rest of the project, you simply repeat rows four and five. Row four is single crochet across every stitch in the row. And row five, single crochet in the first two then do your post stitch around the post stitch remember to skip that stitch behind where the post stitch would be and work into the next two and that's all there is to it like I said, row three, absolute nightmare. But from that point on, you're not having to hunt for stitches. Once you've got your first row of post stitches in, you're laughing and you can just merrily carry on. And after a while, you don't even look for that stitch that you're leaving unworked. So this one here, you just automatically will skip right on over it. Because of when you pull up your double crochet, you can see it's sort of covering that stitch anyway. So that's it. That's the effect if you change every two rows. As I said, it would look amazing in a solid color. It makes a really nice dense blanket. It's totally flat on the back. You don't even notice those little skip stitches. And it's just a really effective, very pretty stitch that will get people thinking, 
how on earth did you do that? <laughs> Which is what we all want really, isn't it, from our crochet, to wow others. <laughs> So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the bar stitch. Super simple, super effective. And I really hope that you guys will give this stitch a go. If you do make any blankets or scarves or anything, even a cushion cover would be amazing out of this stitch, then I would absolutely love to see your photos. You can post them on my Facebook page, which I have linked to in the description box below. I'm hooked by Robin over on Facebook, and that's a great way to share your pictures of what you've done with me. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.